Omniwave Narrowcasting Network brings you a special midday edition of the And, and Mike, And, And Show, live projected on your moon. Everyone look up! Today we feature an exclusive, unprecedented local omni-holographic interview with everyone's formerly favorite musical entity, by some have been called the quietest noise band in the seven galaxies, Zero G Mice. And now, my favorite morning talking bots, And, And Mike, And, And. Welcome to our show, Sentience of the Seven Galaxies. This midday special episode features former galactic darlings, noisemakers, and inadvertent planetoid destructors, Zero G Mice. First, let's introduce the mice, at least the mostly organic portion of the mice, Austin and Univac. Greetings. <laughs> Good hello. Oh, oh you, you you should have probably gone first, Austin. And yet, in the end, I think we wound up getting there anyway. Bravo. So glad that you both were able to join us from your remote locations. Let's jump right in and start at the beginning. How'd you get the name Zero G Mice? Well, after Univac told me to throw a suspiciously large switch, <laughs> the Ethernet cable that held his Skircube pod in geosynchronous orbit above our ground crew snapped. By accident, I should add, in case that wasn't clear, uh, and, and that sent us hurtling through space or something or other. I told you to hit the other switch! Good luck proving that. It's not like there's a recording or anything. Boy, were the Cantanker's ground crew pissed. And yes, I do have recordios from several directions. You want to see them? Gentlemen, gentlemen, if we could, the name? All right, um, so I had a playpen of experimentally white mice. Uh, I was encouraging them to earn their keep by helping pilot the bots, but they complained about the interface, of course. Tiny hands. And when we were thrust unceremoniously into zero G, the mice scattered everywhere, floating into every nook control nub down my pants everywhere i nearly swallowed one N not on purpose just you know in in the moment at all <laughs> they didn't taste very good Oof. yeah I, I agreed uh they did sound pretty good yeah the sound of moist so the situation became the name became the legend zero g mice were once the most popular band in the seven galaxies but we don't know much about either of your backgrounds, your origins. Austin, we know that you're from Earth, but strangely, that's about all we know. There are rumors that you once worked at a chocolate chip food kitchen soda jerk soda fountain franchise. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's actually where I met you back. Uh, <laughs> um, I was his trainee. It, it's kind of funny. Um, while he was tethered geosynchronously above me, he taught me how to milk the spumoni. Uh, <laughs> which is pretty tricky uh, and isn't a euphemism, uh, I should say. <clears throat> uh, anyway, uh, we, we made some unlikely ice cream combinations and used the terribly convoluted credit card and jukebox machines. I might have even left my Chicken Man record there, come to think oh, of it. Oh, man, I love that record. It was a very strange job. Uh, uh, but uh, to answer the question uh, more directly, uh, I, I was born on Earth, um, specifically uh, Mount Shasta, California. Uh, in the city, uh, uh, not the mountain. Oh, oh, and obviously uh, a, a few years before the singularity, which should explain things. <laughs> ah, the singularity. I still don't think that was real. I mean, does, does this, this plot, plot look, look smarter, smarter than, than me? me? Uh, that's a rhetorical question. Like this one? What inspired you to go into traveling the galaxy making moids? Well, according to family records, I've been making noise since shortly after I was born. Give or take a few minutes. Uh, but the kind and quality and genre of noises I've made has changed dramatically over the years, in many notable ways. And Univac, we know basically nothing about you. Where are you from? What makes you tick? Uh, you know, I'm, I'm a bit from here, a little from there. Uh, this arm on my back is from the star Calipinus 9. <laughs> I, I do a regular bi-weekly brain wipe, so I don't really remember much. It, it's a little trick I picked up from an old colleague, Bryce Lynch. Um, I do have sort of glitchy memories of some place made mostly of wires with a lot of red mist, black brain, and frog bots. They were really big. I used to ride them. Sounds like the PDP-11 colony, relatively close to the home planet of the band. Some new sounds. 
the insectile, chitinous children of Chitachi Central, which I believe you played a gig with. Huh, yeah. Yeah, I, I stepped on a few uh, accidentally, I think. I wondered why they gave me such creeps. <laughs> they were exceedingly dope, as the kids used to say. And there were at least a few thousand. You're crying on my nose! <laughs> Hey, don't modulate that frequency. We'll be right back after a brief message from our current sponsor, the Northern California Land Noise Festival of Sacra Tomato, providing your thirsty air holes generous noise since sidereal time 576. We're back with an exclusive shallow diving interview of the band that, according to the small number of witnesses that survived their performances, used to super rock. The previously most popular live stream semi-scripted slash semi-improv absurd sci-fi experimental noise group in the seven galaxies, Zero G Mice. Back, back to your origins, Unibac. What made you get into noise making across the galaxy? Well, yeah, I like to build things and, and take things apart. Some of the things make weird noises. Um, one time I took apart a transceptor chronometer gadget and, and I found some really nice heavy conductors inside. I short-circuited them with my shoelaces and attached a speaker, blacked out temporarily, and, and, and here I am on your show, I, I think. Am I on your show? Is it true at one point Univac used to use the name Zero G Robinson, and Austin used the name Vic Sputnik? Oh yeah, <laughs> those were our names at first. I, I think all of my Zero G minus HR paperwork says Vic Sputnik on it still. Uh, uh, and some of the gear is owned under his name for uh, legal reasons, too. <clears throat> I kept forgetting those names anyway, so we just went back to Anton and Univac. Austin. Texas? My name. Is what? By the way, I, I've been too embarrassed to ask. <clears throat> uh, it's uh, Austin. Are you, are you sure? That just doesn't sound right. Uh-huh. I guess I now understand a bit more. I think that's the point, if I'm not mistaken. Are, are we... Are we being interviewed yet? Yes. yes. Your popularity really kicked into gear at the semi sesquipedalian Battle of the Banging Bangs. Yeah! Yeah. We... One, by default, is surviving the destruction wrought by the incredibly popular closing band, Panspermia. Destruction wrought? <laughs> I mean, they destroyed the entire venue. One thing led to another, and, well, they just thought a quadrant was a little more spectacular of an explosion. Most of the Space Loft shopping asteroid was taken with it, too. Along with all of our... instruments? fake instruments. <laughs> So we need to address the Ingersoll Rand size elephant in the room. Hi, Bob. No, really. Uh, what really happened with the Colonel Bot and his pre-programmed noise bots? Did either of you ever really play instruments? Uh, unfortunately, we are contractually unable to answer that. Just as we're contractually obligated to read the script for this interview. <laughs> Well, as you know, when the truth came out about the mice being fakers, that the bots were the ones actually playing the noise, and you both were just faking, play-acting at being a fabricated boy-bot band, cleverly concocted by the Colonel Bot, the galaxy swooned. Never in the history of music has anything Never. like that ever happened. <laughs> Never. Well, I, for one, was one of your biggest fans, and... For the first time in 300 rotations, I nearly missed coming into my own morning show when I found out. Awesome! So, what really happened? I used to create and play my own instruments before the mice, but, you know, when Johnny, soon to be our tour manager, who we later found out was actually the Colonel Bot, wearing a vaguely humanoid skin, approached us with a great offer to tour the galaxy, see the stars, and light a few on fire, we thought it was an excellent idea. It's not like we can't play. We played everything ourselves on those early rehearsal recordings. And when we learned of the Colonel Bot's plan to build a new mega boy bot band, we could only get in on the deal if we signed on as the titular boy portions boy. of the act. Which meant we couldn't play instruments, merely stand there and look good. At least uh, that was the contract we signed. I, I think we signed it anyway. Uh, 
I guess what I'm saying is it looked pretty good on e-paper and I've always wanted to travel honestly so I, I said yes and didn't really think about it any more than that we even tried to fire Johnny with real fire but CB as the colonel bot wanted to be called when he wasn't wearing the Johnny skin threatened to silently replace us with realistic flesh bots to play our respective roles I didn't think any bot would be able to stand on stage and fake it better than Austin and I could so I gave in and we continued the tour so how did that work? It looked so real. But now that I think about it, the OWN and Narrowcast we all watched only showed each of your upper bodies. You could have been checking your ether mail as far as we knew. <laughs> yeah, that was intentional. CB sent us to Encom's Mega Boy Bot Band Camp, where we were trained in all the sacred pop star arts. You learn musical miming and media manipulation tactics, so interviewers ask you the kinds of questions we want to answer. And our general charisma makes it hard for TV and recordio editors to cut away from anything we're saying or doing when the camera is on. We'll be right back after a brief message from our sponsor, the Northern California Land Noise Festival of Sacra Tomato, now celebrating its 26th rotation around their local sun. And we're back with the Seven Galaxies' former favorite, now disgraced fake musicians, Zero G Mice. So, uh, yeah, even live audiences couldn't tell the difference because we were trained to be just that good at being fake. And you, Univac, Austin, you were trained to play along. What about the instruments you were actually playing? Yeah, the instruments were terrible fakes. Copies of some of my own previous designs made of cheap polypropylene, animal skins and painted cardboard the power cords and the patch cables they were actually made of colored string so later i was so angry i built completely functional replicas of the shoddy gadgets and electronic goo gaz that they glue sticked together for us just to piss cb off but he still didn't let me play them i'm actually surprised we got away with it for so long our fans are usually more obsessive than that and figure out eerily creepy things about us before we even know it. I, for one, am glad that the filthy charade is over and we can just get back to playing music again, finally. Yeah, I'm also very happy to return to being plain old Univac. Not that guy from that fake disgraced formerly galactic famous band, Zero G Mice. <laughs> Those instruments look so real and the quality of the narrow cast was always superb. Surely you had help from below, so to speak. <laughs> yeah, that super helpful, cantankerous ground crew, yeah. our reluctant ground assistants and unwilling collaborators. Who we yeah. thought were our only connection back to Earth, a communication lifeline to our past, so to speak, turned out to be OWNN employees and had been secretly hired on the side by CB to merely facilitate our contractual narrowcasting and minor technical functions. And they were also under contractual obligation to CB to insert into the middle of each narrowcast all of those awful Jerry of the Circus radio shows in between sets. Uh, you know, you know what I'm talking about. Oh, apparently that dog, Rags, was CB's nephew and the Jerry show was one of the many media portfolio properties that CB needed to dump onto the unsuspecting public to fulfill some of his own contractual obligations, if you know what I mean. I thought Garbage. Rags' incessant barking sounded synthesized. Hmm. How about the truths and rumors of a new album? We gave up on that lame album. I'm going solo. Many Mutations got a deal to remix an obscure noise artist for a compilation in a run of 12, and I need to quit everything else and devote all of my time to learning their entire back catalog before I do the remix. Yeah, so cool. I, w I won't have time for the mice uh, very soon, actually. <laughs> wait, 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 you are? Wait, we did? Okay, well then what's next for Zero G Mice? Well, uh, we decided to record one last special, uh, a, a pseudo live set, uh, Mice Music for Mice People, where we actually play our own instruments for a change of pace. We even have shirts made. Sometimes, the first time is the last time, too. My, my favorite t-shirt. After the galactic fallout over the live, we were able to nullify our contract with CB. He dropped us like a flaming flea due to all the bad legal juju the lawyers collective were omnifaxing him. 
but uh, we were able to retain the Zero G Mice name for one last performance as part of our settlement. Oh, uh, and we got to keep all the merch too, uh, since uh, everything else had already been liquidated. I wonder how much I can get for that junk? Probably not a lot. Yeah, I don't know. Oh, the performance will be narrowcast next month, the first, only, and last time as part of some weird intergalactically acclaimed noise festival thing held on a planetoid called, uh, I think, Sacra Tomato? It's in the Northern California land portion of one of the seven galaxies. I think it's near where Austin comes from. Uh, a bit south, uh, actually. I, 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 don't, I don't see anything underneath you right now, except for like maybe a desk is that what the rest of your body looks like I mean I really try never to look down down uh, that is a desk I'm sitting at <clears throat> as are you oh 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 right we're we're sitting we're sitting next to each other yeah right. okay looks like that's all the time we have today we want to thank you zero G mice hey back in Austin for spending time with us uh, uh, oh <laughs> absolutely we're contractually obligated to enjoy it <laughs> <laughs> you know be that as it may thanks I think we all know a bit more about you both and I for one wish you nothing but good luck in your future endeavors uh, I'm just glad the bots can finally play without your slowing them down. Be sure to tune in next periodic when and, and Mike, and, and, discover that their hair is sentient and do a real eye-watering yet embarrassing heart-to-hairstyle interview. We now return you to our regularly scheduled NorCal Noise Fest, already in progress. <laughs>